partner. Mm-hmm. Negros Oriental, no? Uh, isa sa oh, uh, isa sa tampok na probinsya yan dito sa Central Visayas. And ang capital niyan, Dumaguete, eh, isa sa mga uh, mga biker destinations. Paboritong-paboritong puntahan ng mga nagbomotor yan. Napakaganda kasing lugar niyan. Mm-hmm. At pag-uusapan natin ang lokal na politika ngayong araw dyan. Dahil kung titignan natin, partner, bakante magiging bakante yung uh, posisyon ng gobernador. Although china-challenge pa ng incumbent governor na muli pa rin siyang makatakbo, pero parang um, so far parang bakante, apat silang maglalaban-laban at ang uh, mayor ng Bayawan City, Negros Oriental, ay susubok na makuha ang posisyong ito sa 2022 elections. Yung bisita natin actually comes from the fifth generation of this uh, prominent uh, political clan. No? So, ang nakikita niya sa sarili niya, talagang very confident at malakas actually. Majority of the LGUs, no, sabi niya. Majority of the mayors, eh, nasa kanyang panig. No? Tingnan natin. In the run-up to the 2022 election, we go local. We look into the politics in your province, city, and barangay and talk to the leaders who have a direct hand in shaping your lives. I'm Jay Taro. And I'm Cheryl Posin. As, As they, they say, say all, all politics, politics is, is local. local. Pride Henry Tevez is the mayor of Bayawan City in Negros Oriental since June 2016. But prior to this, he served in Congress where he fortunately survived a blast inside Batasang Pambansa in November 2007. The then Negros 3rd District representative sustained second to third degree burns in more than half of his body. His eardrums were damaged and his left foot was badly fractured. After a year, Pride Henry went back to work. It was against his doctor's advice. But Tevez continued on, finishing all three terms in Congress before running for mayor in his home city. In the May 2022 elections, Pride Henry is running for governor of Negros Oriental. Tonight, we welcome Bayawan City Mayor Pride Henry Tevez and now gubernatorial candidate of Negros Oriental. Welcome to the show, sir. Yes, uh, good afternoon as well to the gracious host and thank you for having me in a uh, very good program. Okay, sir, ang mga Tevez eh, hindi na bago sa politika. Lalong-lalo na dyan sa Negros. Napakatagal na pong uh, prominente ng inyong uh, family name. In fact, you're the fifth generation na po, no? Yes, po. Um, ano po ang uh, takbo ng politika dyan? Kamusta naman po? Well, in, 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 in totality, it's, it's pretty decent because you're one of the first to be educated because Silliman University is here, 1901, and the first St. Paul's uh, in the Philippines was also here in 1904. So basically, we are advanced in terms of being an educated population. So for quite a while, I can say that uh, politics here is pretty decent. Pretty decent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At dahil po yung clan po ninyo ay kilala na rin sa politika, kayo po kailan nagsimula ang inyong political career at bakit po kayo naingganyo na pumasok? Uh, it was by accident, Ma'am Sherry, no? I, when I gradu- after I graduated, I was sent home here and I was assigned to the sugar mill of my grandfather mm-hmm. here in, in his district. So when I was, I was helping him run the mill with my father, every time there are, there are things to be done and he was out, he would always tell his constituents to look for me, to look for me, to do this and to do that. And the next thing I know, speaking engagements which he was supposed to be there, he would just ask me to go there in his behalf and speak in his behalf. The next thing I know, he was already asking me to run for provincial board member then. But at the time, my my father was really opposed to it because my father and my mother are not politicians. So they withdrew my candidacy. After one year, one of the board member team friends of ours passed away. And my grandfather said, yeah, that, that slot was supposed to be yours. And I was appointed by President Arroyo. That was the start of my career in public service, ma'am. 
Sir, sir, pag pinag-uusapan ng Negros Oriental, um, ano po yung nakikita nyo na pinakamalaking problema, uh, especially in the past two or three years? Anong nakikita nyo po ang biggest problem nyo dyan? Uh, it's very, uh, on the north side, it's insurgency due to poverty. On the north side. On the on the middle area, like Dumaguete, well, we're already doing well with our retirement tourism, but we just slap the much needed uh, connectivities like a decent airport perhaps and uh, uh, more direct access to, for, from from the outside world to Dumaguete. If we are given more direct access, I am sure that we can expand the retirement tourism industry here and that would bring a lot of, you know, dollars per capita as, you know, they're permanent tourists till death. So on, on that's on the north side. On the south side in our area, well, with that, with that airport coming in, which is already in the works, I am sure that we could do much more in terms of light industries and uh, uh, direct uh, value chain from, of our products, like tuna and, and other products that we have here, which we cannot directly uh, market to the outside world because we have to pass by, you know, sub, you know, sub processors due to the lack of the current in this, uh, infrastructure or connectivity set that hopefully I can put, put in sometime. Ito rin po ba ang mga dahilan kung bakit minabuti niyo po ang tumakbo bilang gobernador ng Negros Oriental? Uh, actually, I was asked by 19 of our 25 uh, LG members of, of the province. I was asked to lead them. Mm -hmm. And I studied the, the problems on every on every area and each dynamics. And I was already looking for solutions as far as two, three years ago. And I was also studying the budget. So more or less, I already have solutions in my mind. And they're already prepared. And I already asked them that uh, if this if if you ask me to, to lead you, this is how we will be doing it. This is how it should be done. This is how the money should be allocated. And this is what I expect of all of you. These 19 mayors who are supporting me. So, and that is how uh, sorry, partner, no? <laughs> 19 mayors is how many from total LGUs po ng members? 25. 25. Oh. So, kasi sabi niyo po na suportado po kayo ng majority kasi ng LGUs. Yes. Because at first, it was them. It was them who came here over to Bayawan to ask me to meet them. Mm -hmm. I, just took the, I just took the challenge. Mm -hmm. They did that in 2019. I, I refused. They did it again now. Then I, I took the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess now it's time because at the time also 2019, I was not ready to leave Bayawan because I was still setting up all the all the benchmarks and all the uh, the plans that uh, that we have to accomplish, and I was I promised some things that I had to make, which I already did, and the benchmarks and all the plans are already intact here, and the leadership that that I will leave you to hopefully are also uh, very credible, and I'm sure they can they can make things better than what I'm doing right now. Partner, just sa Negros Oriental, no, especially dito sa Dumaguete. Uh, pagka nadalaw ko dyan, kailan ka ba huling nadalaw dyan sa Dumaguete? Ako, ang tagal-tagal na. Tagal na. Siguro, more than almost a decade na the last time I was there. But the last time we were there, we were shooting. No? Ang daming ano, foreigner, dami expat. Pag-usapan namin kanina ni Mayor na parang wala ka na nga sa Pilipinas. Maraming puti dyan. Eh. Actually, nagkabanggaan recently, nag-head on, dalawang Germans on, partner. Pero, yun, nabanggit kanina, uh, briefly, nabanggit ni Mayor, no? Uh, yung uh, tinatawag na retirement tourism. Uh, yes. Ano pong nakikita, gano pong kalaking revenues ang nakikita nyo na pwedeng ma-generate nito at uh, kung may improve pa, uh, malaking tulong po ito kung uh, kung sakali ano etong retirement tourism na uh, project na programa uh, on the average they're making a thousand eight hundred to two thousand dollars na pension that sent here mm -hmm. so right now 
on the last census, there were 7,000 permanent residents here. So at $2,000, at $7,000, that's quite a lot. Mm-hmm. But you can see improve on that if the access here is 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 done better. And of course, if we maintain the peace and order, mm-hmm. the, the cleanliness, and uh, the environment to Maguete. And what they usually do, ho, yung mga expats dyan, eh, nagtatayo ng negosyo. Eh. Either uh, may kinalaman sa resort, restaurants, Yes, uh, nag-generate din po ng mga trabaho yan no? para sa mga kababayan natin. Uh, so, eto ho, eh, may mga plano ho ba kayo na para mas palawigin pa itong retirement tourism na sa Definitely. Because, you know, while we are expanding Dumaguete into, you know, Metro Dumaguete, including the three municipios, um, they would like to go farther up north or south kasi gusto nyo mas tahimik. And when that happens, development also follows them. And of course, the yung, yung inflows of pera will also be distributed, you know, much wider. Mm-hmm. And they can also employ more people. Like for the South Perhaps, with Dawin, right now there are already about 40 resorts. Now they're already expanding to Sabuagita, that's the next town, and going up farther south. And, you know, hopefully when this pandemic ends, then things will go back to normal. Because honestly, at now, we're down 8% of what the usual revenues. If before, 8% na lang kayo ng aming ano, uh, uh, pumapasok sa aming mga, mga resorts and hotels now. Medyo problema talaga. Tinamaan talaga kami dun sa normal tourism. But uh, since the, the, the values are here, at least, you know, things are still much better than, than other areas in the Philippines. Sa ating pagbabalik, partner, pag-usapan na natin yung labanan, yung lokal na politika sa Negros. Marami, apat po kayo maglalaban-laban, dalawang degamo at isang masiya sa ano po. Pero katulad ng sinabi mo, Mayor, 19 of the 25, you have their support. But also, gusto ko rin matanong, partner, kasi nung huling na, uh, presidential election, ang sinuportahan ni Mayor ay sa vice presidential bid, I see BBM. Yun ba? Ganun pa rin ba? Ang, siya pa rin ba ang susuportahan naman niya ngayon sa pagkapangulo? Okay, yan ang bago mo sagutin yan. Ang questions ko. Oh. Bag, bago mo sagutin yan, Mayor, we'll just pause for a short break. You're still watching All Politics is Local. We'll be right back. Stay safe and load at your convenience. You can load through online. Remittance and bills payment centers. Load and bills payment counters. And through our load retailers. If you have a smart or TNT SIM, you can also pass a load to your Signal prepaid account. Paying your Signal postpaid bill is easy. Choose from these available payment channels at your convenience. Pay through Signal Online Bills Payment with one-time payment transactions or auto-debit enrollment. Online. Mobile Banking. Online Banking. ATM. And over-the-counter. It's game time. New set of players. Same goal of winning. Isang bayan para sa Gilas, Pilipinas. Support our national team this February. Welcome back. You're still watching All Politics is Local. With us is gubernatorial candidate of Negros Oriental, Pride Henry Tevez. Mayor, 
Bago tayo dumiretsyo dun sa ating derechahan segment, eh pwede nyo na rin pong derechohin akong sagutin sa aking hanging question kanina. Kamusta po ang magiging labanan? Mukhang talaga pong nasa inyo yung advantage, especially if you're saying that 19 of those LGUs are with you out of the 25. Well, I would I would like to assume that that uh, I am the challenger because I'm not the incumbent. So it's good that up to the last day of election, even if even if numbers will show that I am leading, I should always assume that I'm the challenger because I'm not the incumbent. And it should remain that way so that uh, it will motivate me to keep, you know, to keep my my pressure and to keep to keep my energies up. It should be that way. Mm -hmm. Pero meron pa pong isang issue ano doon sa incumbent governor because um technically dapat tapos na yung term niya nakatatlong term na siya but uh, inilalaban pa po yata na pwede pa siya for another term. Yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe he wants to continue his his term more than that. Parter, punta tayo doon nga sa natanong ko nung last na presidential election. For okay. me, sinuportahan niyo po si BBM. So, yeah. sino po ang sabihin na ngayon po, nasa pagka-presidente na siya tumatakbo, ay siya po ang susuportahan niyo? Magulo po dito sa amin nun, to be honest, did you know, um, my brother, Arnie, was one of those who convinced Manny Pacquiao to run. Mm -hmm. okay. Ako naman, and my other brother, I'm a personal friend of Senator Lacson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most of my business partners in mm -hmm. San Kosoko were very good friends, dear friends of Senator Lacson. So that's the dilemma now here in, 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 my, in my part of the country. And we will have to fix that up soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. So, ang sinasabi po natin ay namimili pa between Senator Pacquiao, Senator Lacson, or BBM? Or meron na lang, or between the two na lang po ang pinagpipilian, Lacson and or Pacquiao? Yeah, of course, we cannot discount BBM because, you know, uh, I'm part of the desires block in which uh, Congressman Alvin Pilitis is the head of the desires block. Boss namin yan eh. And I believe last week, I think he already declared his support to, to BBM. Then that would make that, that that would make it more complicated. But still, let's see what happens. I mean, it's 80 days away. Something should happen in the very near future. <laughs> Wala pa partner. Wala pang malinaw oh. na susuportahan. Oh. Oh. Pero derechahan na tayo. <laughs> okay. Ayan po. Okay, dito po. Tatanungin namin po kayo kung ano ang inyong stand o opinion sa mga isyong nakadikit sa inyong pangalan o sa lugar na inyong tinatakbuhan, Mayor. Yes, po. Mayroon lamang po kayong isang minuto para sagutin ang bawat katanungan. Yes. Derechahan na, partner. Mauna ka na. Okay. Sinasabi po ninyo na kayo ay pro-industrialization pero ang probinsya pong inyong tinatakbuhan ay more on agricultural. How do you reconcile that? Pangangatawanan niyo po ba ang pag-unlad ng probinsya o pananatilihin niyo po yung pagiging agricultural nito or pwede namang balansihin? That's why I'm, I'm putting up the industries here to support our, our agricultural products. Recently here, I brought in the chicken industry so that, uh, you know, we can also complement on fertilizer requirement coming from chicken manure. I also brought in a uh, a new sugar mill here to cater to farmers. I also brought up investors in rice. I also intend to bring up direct exports of our tuna once our new airport will be finally constructed. Because all these things does not allow us to, to value add our products if these are not in place. So the best way to increase values of agriculture is to put the industries supported by these raw products within here. Uh, San Miguel will be coming in also with BMEC and uh, and food food processing like hot dogs. They already bought a property south south in our district, and we are very excited to that. And we are also preparing so that we can also you know supply them with the raw products that this this industries need. So basically, it's it's agro industrial as a support our farmers so that we can also uh, get higher prices from our raw produce and get more yeah, employment as well. Speaking of farmers, uh, Mayor, ito, Derechahan, ano-anong mga konkretong plano 
ang uh, balak ninyo o nilalatag ninyo para sa mga farmers muna, para sa mga magsasaka na bumubuo ng halos majority po ng mga mamamaya ng probinsya ng uh, Negros Oriental? Yeah. While I, uh, I come from a landed family, my experience in Congress was in the Agriculture uh, Agrarian Reform Committee. I was chairman of that for, for quite a while. That's why when I became mayor, I localized the support services to all our beneficiaries. Only in Baywan can you find free plowing every four hectares, subsidy of five bucks of fertilizer per hectare, uh, free uh, uh, installation of fish pads on areas with water, with the support of nurseries and subsidized feeds to make sure that they can also grow fish for for selling or for for consumption and many others. I believe that this is an agricultural province and there are a lot of beneficiaries here who has not received the support services needed from the national government. There's no reason why the local government cannot give that, especially with the Bandanas law. That should be open to the whole province, not just by one city. Ayan. Connected yun sa farmers eh. Yung problema ang kinakaharap din po ng probinsya ng Negros uh, Oriental Mayor, yung agawan po sa lupa, ano? Yung uh, ng mga magsasaka, lalo na yung mga undercarp. Paano nyo po susolusyonan kung kayo po ang uh, palarin na maging sunod na gobernador po ng Negros Oriental? I was up in up north. The problem is not just carp. It's all public land. So there's no there's no paper Kaya pwedeng agawan kasi wala namang papel eh. Mm -hmm. So, the first solution is AIA-andi mo lahat. Like Yuhulgan, for example, puro public land. Agawan lang. Either AIA-andi mo sa pangunasyon yung legislation or mas madali, CBFMA from DNR. So that they have a 25-year hold on the land that nobody can evict them and renewable for another 25 years. But the more permanent solution is ipaklareklasimay natin sa AND sa Kongreso so that each person living there can really hold on to something which protects him on his land tenure. Dalawa yan, mame. Once I, I'll do the land tenure uh, problem after, and I will also do uh, direct support services to them which was supposedly given by DAR a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That was my experience with DAR. I was chairman of a grand reform committee for a while. Since it was not present, I had to do it on my own volition locally. And I intend to do that in the full province, not just by one city. All right. Okay, isa rin po sa malaking problema, Mayor, na kinakaharap ng Dumaguete ay ang reclamation project para sa industrialization program. Hmm. Sinasabi ninyo sa inyong mga constituents na kayo po ay for sustainable development. Pero taliwas po ito sa sinasabi ng mga eksperto at mga environmentalist. May irreversible damages daw ito sa pangkalahatan. Ano po ang stand dito? Yes, uh, I was against that reclamation because what I wanted was, di ba, I, I just told you a while ago, we're building a new airport here in in Baco, beside Dumaguete. And that's already approved. Uh, the money is already there from the Korean government, $110 million. What I'd like to happen is when we transfer that airport, then the old airport becomes a white elephant. That's 63 hectares in Metro Dumayete. You don't have to reclaim. And you don't have to, to be original about it because we can just copy what happened in Cebu. Cebu IT Park used to be Lahug Airport. The Iloilo Convention Center now used to be old Iloilo Airport. We can just re replicate what they did there. Instead of reclaiming, I'll just use the old airport which will become a white elephant very soon. And with that 63 hectares, I can really bring in more investments, more revenues, more employment. Definitely. Yes. Transparency and good governance. Yan po sa sa mga pinanghahawakan yung plataforma. At bilang two-time dangal ng Bayan Awardee ng Civil Service Commission, hahabulin nyo po ba? yung na maaksyonan ng ombudsman yung mga naging tiwaling official po ng probinsya um, I think I gave a good example here in Bayawan City but more than that ma'am I think the best way is to improve um, selection of new public servants based on merits alright we'll just pause for a short break you're watching All Politics is Local we'll be right back
Hi, I'm Jerome Lastimosa. Hi, I'm LJ Gonzalez. Panoorin nyo ang episode namin sa Step Up Season sa UAP Varsity Channel. Available on Signal Channel 263 HD and on Signal Play. Welcome back. You're still watching All Politics is Local. Still with us is gubernatorial candidate of Negros Oriental, Pride Henry Tevez. At Mayor, dahil na-warm up na po namin kayo, no? napainom na namin kayo ng tubig during the break. Eh. Okay, dito na po tayo sa mga isyo ng probinsyang inyo pong tinatakbuhan. Ituloy na natin itong paggigisa natin. Parang, pero parang wala namang... Makaka-challenge, parang very easy kay Mayor. Kaya, Itong kaya. ating ultimate challenge, overprime ang ating uh, title today ng ating ultimate challenge. Hango yan sa kantang pinasikat ng eraser heads yung overdrive. Dahil balita namin, Mayor, paborito po ninyong banda ang eraser heads. So magkaka, ano pala tayo, magkaka-generasyon. <laughs> BTS ako ha. Para po sa inyo, anong awitin ng e-heads ang nababagay sa mga personalidad na aming babanggitin at bakit ito ang inyong napili para sa kanila. Dapat na-review nyo lahat ng mga titles ng mga kanta ng ihip. Or, you know, with my heart na sa sobrang paborito nyo, Mayor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Game na po kayo? Ano ko nito? Tapos, ito, dagdagan natin yung challenge, mm -hmm. Jay. Parang madali lang sa kanya. Dapat may kakantahin siyang linya. Yun na lang. Kanta. Hindi ko ay I'm not I'm not very familiar with the titles but I'm familiar with the songs. Oh, so <laughs> we'll you, okay, we'll make you sing them. <laughs> <laughs> Sige, I'll try my best. Okay. okay, first personality po natin, President Rodrigo Duterte. Wala ko ma <laughs> Kung hindi niyo maalala yung title ng kanta, kantahin niyo na lang yung alam mo. <laughs> hindi ko naman kasi pwede sabihin pare ko dahil tatay siya eh. <laughs> <laughs> tatay ko. <laughs> Pero na kung problema. Ang tatay kapit bahay ko. <laughs> Pwede, pwede. Parker, baka kailangan natin ng uh, beer dito para... Oo oh, okay. <laughs> Pwede. Maganda. Oh, ito, Mayor. Next personality, ha? Ayan, nag-enjoy na si Mayor. Okay. Number two is VP Lenny Robredo. Huwag mo lang itanong sa akin. <laughs> Bakit huwag mong itanong sa akin? Paano ba kinakanta yun? Paano ang tono nun, no, Mayor? Oh, meron silang alam na... Parang oh, meron silang alam na hindi ko alam eh. Hindi <laughs> ko talaga ma... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not good at this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, ito baka mas mapadali ang paghahanap nyo ng kanta. Presidential aspirant Bongbong Marcos. Ayoko naman sabihin laki sa layo at Jeff Brooks kasi dati yun. Eh. Ngayon, magaling na siya eh. <laughs> laki sa layaw. Eh, dati. Hindi na ngayon. Hindi na ngayon? Hindi na ba ngayon? Dati yun. Maybe in the second place. So... Hmm. But you have a personal relationship with BBM. Kasi kanina yung napag-usapan natin ay your brother nga po convinced, no, na for, for Senator Manny Pacquiao to run for president. Yeah. And then, Senator Lacson naman is also, you have a good relationship with him. So as with Senator Bongbong. I was I was with him in Congress for a term, I think. With when when Vivian was in Congress, I was his colleague. Mm -hmm. I was I was in Congress with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that was the 15th, 15th Congress, I think. We were together before he ran for the Senate. Mm -hmm. we during that time ba na mag-colleague kayo, pwede nyo pang kantahin sa kanya yung laki sa layaw, Jeff Rox? Ngayon Dina. na. Hindi na. Hindi na. 
Mid week eighties. Eighties. Okay. Because that time it was already very decent and very, you know, I spoke very eloquently. Alone with sila si Bibiem at si Martin when they speak, they really speak very eloquently. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Uh, next personality, incumbent Governor Roel De Gamo. Yung kalaban niyo. Anong e-head song ang naiisip nyo? Ang huling El Bimbo ba yan? Alright. Okay, hindi ko masasabihin. Huwag mo na lang itanong sa akin, hindi mo nasasabihin. Kailangan na ito, no? Bapag kinakanta, Mayor. Huwag itanong sa akin, hindi ko naman sasabihin. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, partner. Next, incumbent Vice Governor Doc Mark Macias. Kalaban ulit ito. Mm-hmm. Ay, na lang. Minsan na lang. Minsan. Kasi magkakaibigan kami niyan eh. Minsan, naging magkaibigan. O yes. sample. Sample. Ang tayo ay naging tunay na magkaibigan. <laughs> actually still a friend of him now. Ito, partner, sigurado ako, magkaibigan pa rin sila nito, itong next personality nito. Zona, Zona Lee. Ah, my one and only. <laughs> ano kaya ang ano? Ano kaya dapat ang hindi ka, oh, hindi mahihirapan humanap ng kanta partner. Oh, At saka dapat, nahirapan po. Hmm, tamang kanta yan, tamang kanta. Lang. Pero ang, ang favorite song namin dalawa is, ah, uh, Pag kahit maputi We just done that last January 11, our 25th year wedding anniversary. Ah, wow. wow, silver. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> ah, isa pa po, ito. Ano po ang inyong kantang e-heads for the people of Negros Oriental? Hindi e-heads, ang kanta ko para sa Negros Oriental. Sorry, ha? Ah. Sige po, ano pong kanta? Habang may buhay. Oh. Pwede nyo na rin, pero hindi na, pwede nyo pa rin kantahin ng konti. Dahil sa'yo lamang iaalan ang aking buhay. Seriously, that's my song because I'm a bombing victim and I have a second life. Mm-hmm. That's why that's my song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anong kanta ni... Mayor Pride Henry Tevez sa IHES. Sa IHES? No, minsan. Minsan talaga. Minsan talaga. Minsan sa may kalayaan tayo nagkatagpuan. Yan. Because, di ba, I'm from the province. Mm-hmm. I studied in Manila when I came home. Mm-hmm. And those are just my memories of my friends there. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Ito po, panghuli, um, uh, Mayor, bakit kayo po ang dapat piliin ng mga botante ng probinsya ng Negros Oriental para maging gobernador sa 2022 elections? Kasi my fellow Oriental Negrens says want to change and I am the change. I will not say I'll make the change. I am the change. That's why they will Go with me. Not choose me, but go with me and support my cause. All right. For the people of Negros Oriental Province, change is coming, partner. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, gubernatorial candidate of Negros Oriental, Pride Henry Tevez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Okay. We've asked the questions and gotten to know your candidates a little bit better. Negros Oriental, you decide. I'm Jay Taruk. And I'm Cheryl Kwasim. Join us tomorrow for another episode of All Politics is Local. Basketball competition ay muling magbabalik. Buong mundo ang naghanda at muling magtutunggali.